Well, hi again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act Two and our weekly blog where Art and I solve all the problems of the world. But today, Art has a special cautionary tale for you. Yes, a caveat emptor, if you will. Caveat emptor. I love that. Yeah. Buyer like, beware. And e pluribus e unum. <laughs> e pluribus <laughs> unum. And the, and the wheel that squeaks gets the grease. Correct. That's that's. But we're not talking about squeaky wheels today. We're talking about uh, furniture that has electrical and like recliners and things like that that have parts that could possibly wear out at some point. As and, opposed to as opposed to my porch couch, which just broke. Correct. <laughs> the the frame broke. Correct. It's a cheap couch. Yeah. Right. But, well, now recliners are interesting. You should mention recliners because, mm -hmm. it, first of all, we don't think of them as mechanical. You know, it's just a piece of furniture. Um, but they're also very, very popular, particularly among seniors. They become more popular. I can remember uh, my uncle got a recliner. You know, he was probably 40 years old and he loved to sit back and have the cigar in his sure. recliner. But, you know, the older you get, the more important a recliner can be. Not to recline necessarily, but they have chairs that now sit you up and do this and have cup holders and so they're they're very popular things yeah but let me let me let me be clear uh, and uh we had some pre-discussion on this and uh, we were talking about uh, uh manufacturers who actually manufacture their own product yeah uh, and can stand behind furniture it because manufacturers, furniture yeah. manufacturers like uh, the recliners that you see in say in the back of an aarp magazine i would assume i'm not sure for the most part that they manufacture their own, and and if they had to get a, a replacement motor, for instance, or a, a, an arm uh, that helps move things up and down in there, they would have access to them, or they right. would hold on to a supply. But uh, I'm talking about uh, major uh, retailers uh, okay. that you see around In other the country. Words, your your local furniture store. Correct, uh, and and probably. Okay. It probably carries lots of brands, which which they don't manufacture themselves. Right. And here's what the problem here's what the problem is. And I found out uh, just uh, about a little over two years ago, about two and a half years ago, perhaps. Uh, Linda and I went out and we bought a new sectional. It was time for us to get a new couch, and uh, Linda had always wanted a recliner, so we bought a couch and a love seat combination, which had not one recliner but had four in them. And it had little oh, buttons wow. on the side that moved the, the feet up and yeah. down and the back back and forth and the heads rest. And it had a USB port. And wow. one That's of them okay. even had in the armrest, it had uh, outlets for you to plug in uh, uh, not only a USB port, but also to plug in a, a regular thing. Let's say you want to recharge your uh, iPad or w what have you. A your regular tablet. electrical outlet. Right. Or if you, you want them to plug in a heating element, and some of them even have those built up. But let, let's cut to the chase here. So here's what the yeah. issue is. So we're uh, over two years, and I think it was probably slightly uh, beyond warranty, when yeah. uh, Linda, Linda's favorite sectional piece, uh, and I'll get into that in a moment about weird terms they have for this stuff, stopped working. All the others worked. But her favorite one, where she was, you know, good, and yep. she had been for during the pandemic. This was her. This was the center of her universe. It yeah. stopped working. Yeah. What yeah. to do? Well, you call. I call, in this case, uh, and I'm going to give a shout out because of the poor service I got to Mathis Brothers, which is a major retailer in Southern California. Mathis very, Brothers Furniture. I I know yeah. them well. Right. And uh, they they seem to be all over. They do, and, and uh, they have a, a, a good value in terms of what, unless you need a repair. And when you need a repair, it basically they weren't, they basically weren't, maybe for a year or two, but they basically weren't for materials and workmanship. So once they deliver it, you sign off on it. Yeah. You know, whatever limited warranty after that you have, you might have to fight. And they're very polite. They are really good on the phone. Okay. Yeah. And, but the, here's what the problem is. And, since I had this problem, I found out that it is apparently a nationwide, uh, industry-wide problem. Is uh, that furniture most of, industry problem? Yeah, re retail, normal retailers. Okay, okay, there are probably some high end that make their own, as you uh, as you had pointed out to me in a, 
a different conversation that right. you know, maybe when they uh, triple the price, but then they'll they'll be able to store parts, maintain a, a, a store of parts. Once it's out of warranty, they have, well, when I call them, they say, well, we no longer uh, are in contact with this manufacturer. Well, why? Because wow. there are tens of thousands in China and and yeah. Asia yeah. and, and yeah. even a few uh, still in America that just make tons of stuff. They sell it to them as is, and when they run out, they run out of parts. So in, in any yeah. event, I went on a two-month journey after Mathis. Mathis not only told me that they don't service it anymore, but they couldn't even give me a, a link to someplace that might have a list of parts or maybe able to get them. Wow. So Well, that's that's because they're just a retailer. They're well, not but here's the, the point. The manufacturer and the warranty is gone. Here's the point, okay? These things don't last forever. Okay. Mechanical. Right. Anything mechanical. Yep. So, so what I did was I, after a two month journey, the bottom line is going to be that finally over this past weekend, I had my son in law come over to help me turn it, flip the love seat because I was able to track down the motor and the remote switch. Oh, good. And, uh, but it took me two months and it really wasn't that expensive. And I was, I told Mathis, I don't care, charge me two, three hundred dollars, whatever it's going to be. But get somebody here and fix it. You know what's going on. I don't even know, you know, how, you know a spark plug I can replace. Uh, right. Uh, because you know, I learned when I was a kid. But furniture, especially the mechanical part of it, was just Who something knew? out of my world. But I Who wanted knew? to fix you know, it. I have to. I have to tell you, Art. Just to interrupt, <laughs> I never thought of even though my uncle had this wonderful recliner. I never thought of furniture as a mechanical uh, ever mm -hmm. needing repair. When the couch broke out front in the uh, you know the cheap uh, porch couch, I, would, I just put a, a another piece of wood in, and I didn't ex never thought that anybody would repair this right. stuff. And there it's are perfect. all sorts of furniture repairs. As a matter of fact, when I posted on Mathis how I felt abandoned by them, that they just left me out in the world. I actually, a good friend of mine happened to read the post and called me and says, I know a guy. Yeah. And I called the guy and he, 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 if you want to have your, your couch redone, he can do that. And he knows how to replace some of those things. That's not his primary business, but he told me he can't even find the parts for it. Wow. So I was really left out to dry. So, but that well, And also, yeah. also you're talking about a high end piece of furniture with lots of bells and whistles. I mean, this, this is something that you would expect people would service. Right. Even if, uh, as they say, I, I had no problem paying for repair, but I couldn't find anybody who could right. track down the parts. I tracked down the parts because in, in many cases, there are replacement parts, but it meant Amazon, Google searches, and so on and so forth. Sure. And finally, in my particular case, I found this company in Alpharetta, Georgia, that actually made the motor. And how do I know they made the motor? Because after going to YouTube and looking at a lot of things, it showed me how to get the serial number of the motor, which means I had to turn the couch over and I had to, at least if Mathis Brothers come in and say, here are the part numbers, go search yeah. for them, that would have been a start. Yeah. Anyway, so eventually, uh, cutting to the chase, eventually I was able to track down this company. I told them what I had. Then I learned things like, well, which switch do you need? Well, the one that my wife sits in the left chair. Well, that's called a right-facing switch because <laughs> they, in the furniture business, the seat on the left is the right-facing one because they figure it out from the way you look at it. But if you yeah. order the wrong one, it won't fit. <laughs> okay? And the switches are identical except for maybe a little notch in them or something. So yeah. in any event, uh, I was able to, and this is around the holiday time, so things were tough with... Uh, uh, and probably there were supply chain issues, but in any event, within a week and a half of identifying the company and sending emails back and forth, because they didn't want to speak to you, because they probably have thousands of people who want to sit on the phone with them to find out exactly what's going on, yeah. who were confused. Anyway, got the parts in. As it turns out, the parts had different connectors, even though they had the right name. So what I had hoped that if it was a bad switch, I just plug the switch into the motor. If the motor worked, then I return the motor, which was seventy-five bucks, and keep the switch at thirty bucks. But that didn't happen. But together, so I had to replace both the switch and the motor, and 
the bottom line is that uh, uh, I have a great son-in-law, Jim, who is mechanically inclined. He's an engineer. And we sat there in that half hour project, which should have only been a half hour, it took about two and a half hours. But because uh, it, it was, you know, that was, it didn't align exactly where the screws went in the last time to the next time and the hinges that went on and so on. Yeah. But anyway, we got it done. He finished a, a full carafe of tea. Uh, and uh, it took me probably more time to put all the tools back that I pulled out of the garage than it took him to get home. <laughs> so, wow. uh, but in any event, it all worked out well. But the point is that unless you have, you're you're curious, and you know I fixed a uh, 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 stove. The the little tube, the little lights that went out began hard to read when you were preheating the and so forth. And that also took me about. Uh, um, uh, I I couldn't even find. I had uh, uh, purchased it through Sears uh, uh, years ago, and it's twenty years old. All these parts exist, but you got to find them, and nobody helps you. Yeah. Anyway. And I have to tell you something for everybody who rags on Amazon, there are tons of replacement parts. If you say, I need a replacement part for a such and such. And what happens is they may get, they may not have the exact part, but they'll get you to a manufacturer who you, you can then contact and say, this is the model number I have, what do I need? Yeah. Okay. And then if you have enough guts to go in and play with these things, if you've ever, if you've never torn a, a, a stove apart, yeah. I don't recommend that you do it. And they don't all have things that screw and they have little things that you turn and you don't want to break them. So I'm willing to go ahead and do that work. But for many people, first of all, it's physically difficult, right. especially as you get older. Well, you, for, it, particularly particularly with a recliner and yours is right. you know part of a sectional, but any recliner, it's a big piece of furniture. And, and quite most frankly, of us are not capable of flipping it over and working on quite it. Quite frankly, 10 or 15 years ago, I might have been more easily able to pick it up and turn it over myself. But I yeah. couldn't do it. So I asked Jim and a great guy. Uh, uh, we lucked out with a great, well, all our, our, our daughter-in-law and son-in-law great. But uh, he was just terrific and he was patient and He's strong and he's young, and we got it over. And then he just he just kept, oh well, well we'll try it this way we'll try that you know what why don't we try both of them okay we'll try both of them and we got it all working together and I I was I was going to be happy if everything worked except for the USB as long as the recliner worked but everything worked so here's the here's the bottom line of the whole thing I in my research I found that most major retailers okay yeah once they deliver it. Okay, and maybe you get a little bit uh, uh, six months in, maybe you bought Scotch Guard or something to protect it against spills and things like that. Once you've done that, okay, you're pretty much on your own. Because yeah. if they can't easily get the parts, they basically are saying to you, eat dirt and die. Yeah. If, if at least they would say, you know what, we don't do this anymore because we're not in contact with the manufacturer, but here's where they are. Here's a place you can go to right. get a list of the parts, okay? Or we'll do it, but we're going to charge you 300 bucks, okay? Right. Now, in my particular case, it was about $120 worth of parts and the labor. I almost hired this I know a guy guy to come in and yeah. do the parts, but I figured I'd give it a, a shot because Jim was around, and uh, I knew that he, he, he could come and help out. So here's the problem. Unless you're buying like ten thousand dollars sectionals, you're only buying three thousand dollars sectionals. Uh, so you're at a, a normal retailer that I think most of us go to. Or yeah. if you're not going to the manufacturer themselves, which is like we were talking about these recliners and the back of AARP, the chances are that if something goes wrong with a uh, a piece of furniture that has some uh, uh, moving parts to it, like a recliner especially electrical parts, you're probably, once you get a year or two into it, you're screwed, okay? And there really is no industry, cottage industry, that says, well, we're in the business of fixing these things and we can do the research. There may be a few people Art, like that, but they Art, don't advertise. Art, you've done it now. People are going to be calling you saying, Art, you did it. Can I'm, you really, for I'm really expensive and I don't know how available Jim is. <laughs> Hey, listen, I think there's a, a, a really important lesson here for everybody, a universal lesson, and that is probably twofold. First of all, what comes to mind are 
other mechanical things. Now you're talking about a recliner with motor and goes up and down and mm -hmm. legs go up and back goes down. But think about all the things that are advertised on television today aimed at seniors. First of all, there's a hot tub that I see, a walk-in hot tub, but some mm -hmm. kind of shower is another well, one. Like the thing, it's, it's a Pat Boone. That's Pat Boone's thing, right? Well, they, they, they all fit into the same category I'm mm -hmm. thinking of. And and the, the other product is the one that goes up the Stairmaster or something, goes up the mm -hmm. stairs, and you, you ride up the stairs. These are all mechanical devices. And let's face it, every every product like that comes with a warranty. So lesson number one is you need to read the warranty. Nobody's going to, once that warranty, it's just like the cars, you know, they, <laughs> what do they call it? Planned obsolescence in the cars. Right. You're, this car is a, Boy, are you, are you dating transition. us? Are you dating us? They, oh, don't, yeah. they don't use that term anymore. <laughs> It's, I'm telling you, yeah, once true. the warranty is once mm. the warranty is gone, you're plumb out of luck. All right, and that's why the cottage industry of extended warranties or third-party warranties has grown up, particularly around cars. Mm. But you can buy them for almost anything. So number one is read the warranty. Number two lesson for everybody is look, do your research on any product, particularly the more expensive it is, the more complicated it is, the more mechanical it is. Do your research and find out if the company that is selling it to you can stand behind it. Um, we were talking furniture before, and I know there are some companies out there that have, they are furniture manufacturers, right. and they sell the they sell. They probably sell to anybody who wants to retail it for them, but they also have their own showrooms. And so you go to this showroom, you you got a better chance of you buy their product. You got a better chance of getting service and repairs because it can go back to their their shop, but not a third party manufacturer. Right. But nevertheless, nevertheless, read the warranty, know what you're getting, and be prepared. So I, I think. Your story is a um, cautionary tale. And I think uh, yeah, bottom line is, as you said in the beginning, caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. So that's our Latin lesson for the day. <laughs> well taken. We and, all um, e pluribus unum. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.